Fall, uh, this week, fallout continues from the special counsel's damning report on Biden's mishandling of top secret classified documents. Senator Josh Hawley, Missouri, he is calling on the attorney general, Merrick Garland, to take action. Now, the senator telling Fox News Digital, foxnews.com, that Garland must either uh, charge the president or invoke the 25th Amendment. Meanwhile, the Biden campaign has a new strategy to prove Joe's young and hip by making TikToks. Now, despite the serious national security concerns that have been raised about the Chinese-owned app, now keep in mind, many federal employees, they have been banned from having TikTok on their government devices, but not Joe. I guess he has that special relationship with the communist Chinese and friends at CEFC. Anyway, joining us now with more, Missouri Senator Josh Hawley. Senator, great to have you. Um, Thank you. I want you to explain why this, what you're saying here is, is critical, because the special counsel's report said he willingly and knowingly kept these documents. That means he violated the law. There was no raid. There's no charges. There was, you know, no comparison to Trump, just like in the Hillary Clinton case. You know, I, explain to me why this really is a, a moment of choosing for Merrick Garland, and I don't think he's capable of making the right choice because I think he's weaponized that department. Well, the choice is this. It can't possibly be that Joe Biden at one and the same time is not capable of standing trial and, Sean, can still be president of the United States. It's one or the other. And what the special counsel said is he willfully retained classified documents. He willfully disclosed them. That's a crime. But the special counsel said, oh, but I can't charge him because, you know, he can't stand trial. Well, all right, then he shouldn't be president. So Garland needs to either charge Biden, prosecute him, or go to the cabinet under the 25th Amendment and say, guys, he can't be president. We need to remove him. That's the choice. It's one or the other. You can't have it both ways. Okay. Now, looking at, at that report and just what you see with your own eyes, and we have played so many of these moments on this show, probably more than any other show. And we probably were way ahead of the curve more than other people. And I took a lot of heat in the beginning for pointing out the obvious. We showed on this program on Friday, Joe Biden in 2020 versus Joe Biden today. And 2020, he, he looks lucid compared to where he is today. And it was bad in 2020. So clearly things have gotten you know, dramatically worse for him on this issue. And yet, I don't know, the media and the people around him seem to just want to enable him and, and prop him up, even though I don't think, I frankly think they're hurting him uh, in ways that we can't even begin to know. Well, and the special counsel's report confirms all of that, Sean. I mean, what it says is the guy can't remember when he was vice president. Think about that. Eight years as vice president, he can't remember it. He can't remember when his own son died. He can't remember key questions about the Afghanistan debate when he was VP. He, he clearly is not in charge of his mental faculty, so much so they can't charge him with a crime, which means he cannot be president of the United States any longer. I mean, it's just that simple. And Sean, everybody can see it, to your point. The American people know. You could see it in that press conference. He doesn't know where Mexico is. He doesn't know who the president of Mexico is. He doesn't know what's going on in Gaza. He has no idea. The guy is not fit to be president. He should be removed. And if the Democrats had some integrity, they would do it. OK, that's <laughs> I'm not sure that's ever going to happen. Uh, however, you do have one problem. You can't indict a sitting president. That part we know. So that would be post his presidency. But that would mean he'd have to lose in November for that to happen. Uh, is Joe trying to stay in for his very survival or, you know, what can the rationale be? How is it so transparent to so many Americans? Everybody watching this show, I would tell you 98 percent of them see what I see and see what you see. But yet here he is, you know, as of today, he's their nominee and they're circling the wagons. Republicans create circular firing squads, but they're circling the wagons, you know, in a pretty strong way. How do you interpret that? Well, I just interpret it that, you know what, the presidency and public office in general has been pretty lucrative for the Bidens, Sean. I mean, let's be honest about it. The Bidens have made money like nobody's business off of Joe being a senator and they being vice president and now being president. I mean, you talk about selling access to foreign corporations and foreign governments. That's what his son has been out there doing, apparently his brother, who knows who else. 
So they have a financial interest. I mean, of course they want the guy to be president. They're making gobs of money on it. But the truth is, it's bad for the country. The truth is, the guy's a criminal. That's what the special counsel report said. So either charge him like a criminal or else force him to resign. Go to the cabinet, invoke the 25th Amendment, say he isn't capable. We can all see it. And it's time for some Democrat to have some integrity and actually... What do you make of the FBI, the FCC, all warning that TikTok, you know, is owned by China and it's likely a spying device? And, uh, you know, they have all these location biometric identifiers, China's authoritarian government. Uh, Biden in 22 himself, he banned the use of TikTok by federal uh, by the, uh, the federal government's nearly four million employees on devices owned by the agencies. Why is he then using it? Can you explain that? No, I think the only explanation is he's so desperate, Sean. And also, let's not forget, a lot of this is actually about Israel. He's got a huge problem with his radical left base. The radical left are pro-Hamas, let's be honest. They, TikTok is a pro-Hamas geyser of propaganda, and now Biden wants to be on it. He wants to get back in the good graces of the anti-Israel hater crowd who he apparently needs to vote for him. So he's rushing to TikTok, and he's rushing to try to reach out to anybody, anybody who will vote for him. And the truth is, you're right, this government, Congress, banned TikTok on all federal devices for all federal employees. I know, because I wrote the law. And he signed it into law. And here he is. Oh, no, never forget it. Forget it. I'm getting on TikTok. I need the votes. I need to grovel. And this is really what he's doing. It's all about groveling desperation to get reelected. It's pathetic. Let me ask you this. Do you think that Joe Biden makes it until November? That's 266 days from today. Do you think he makes it? And if you don't think so, who would be likely to replace him? I, I don't know how he makes it, Sean, to I me, mean, to be honest. I just I look at that press conference that he did a couple days ago. I look at the special counsel's report. The American people know he's not capable. Everybody can see it. The special counsel confirms it. I just think that there's going to be a move to replace him at the convention. Who's it going to be? I have no earthly idea, but I just I have a hard. It won't be Kamala, though. I don't think he makes it. Well, it's interesting. Gavin Newsom in the interviews I've had with him has said, no, he, he thinks that Kamala is up next, not him. He's been very clear about it multiple times. Um, who else is there? Uh, I kind of I, I don't think Michelle Obama wants anything to do with politics. I might be wrong. We'll see. Um, but I don't know. It's going to be interesting to watch. I'll tell you that. Um, anyway, Josh Hawley. Thank you, Senator. Appreciate it.